Hello YouTube, uh, the holidays are coming up so I thought I'd make a how-to video on how to make a honey flavored cider. Your first ingredient you need is fresh apple cider, primarily. Uh, I picked this up from Musgrave Orchard. Uh, it's just a local orchard. They use preservative-free apple cider. That's the biggest key when you're making a hard cider. There can't be any sulfates or preservatives in it, or your yeast won't be able to turn sugar to alcohol. Um, there's three essential ways you can get cider. You can take apples, you can press them, and get the juice yourself. This gives you the most flexibility because you can choose what apples go into your cider. This way, um, cideries choose the apples for you. They make the cider and you just buy it, but it's a lot less work and it's also local. The last way you can get cider is if you go to your local grocery store like Walmart. Uh, they'll have apple ciders, but you'll run into the issue of um, them actually have putting a lot of preservatives in them. So I try to stay away from that method. Uh, the next ingredient you need is honey. Um, we're gonna be sweetening the cider with the honey at the end of the process. And at the beginning of the process, we're gonna bring the potential alcohol up and um, with this honey instead of sugar. A lot of guys like using sugar, but I thought the honey would be a good thing for a honey cider. And then the last thing you need is yeast. The yeast turn the sugar and the cider and honey to alcohol. And it'll leave it a little dry, so we're gonna back sweeten with honey, like I said. And finally, uh, these all these really aren't necessary, but they're like your additive ingredients, and it'll make a lot better cider. The first one I'm gonna go over is potassium sorbate. What potassium sorbate does is it helps you stabilize your wine so you can back sweeten it with the honey. So you can, instead of having a dry cider, you can have a sweet cider. If you're gonna back sweeten, you absolutely have to have potassium sorbate. Uh, the next thing is the yeast nutrient. It'll help you just, your yeast stay healthy throughout the fermentation. This isn't 100% necessary, but I like using it. Uh, potassium metabisulfate. We're going to be using this to uh, sanitize the cider. So, um, and make sure there's no wild yeast or anything that can grow in your cider, as well as bacteria for the most part. The next thing is acid blend. Acid blend is going to help with the tartness you get in apples. A lot of orchard ciders use sweet apples and they lack tartness. And once the sugar eat away all the, sh or once the yeast eat away all the sugar and the cider, um, you are not left with a good apple taste. So uh, if you add a little bit of sourness, it adds a bit of complexity. And then the next thing we have is wine tannins, which also helps with complexity and pectic enzymes. Both these make sure your cider when it's done, stays clear, and um, it keeps longer in the bottles. Uh, these aren't completely necessary. You might just end up with a cloudier cider. So if your cider ends up cloudy, it's because you didn't use these two things. All right, on to the next step. All right, we'll be moving on to our next step of the process. I'll be going over the equipment you're gonna need to make your hard cider. So the first thing is that I like using is a racking cane. You'll see how to use it later. It's basically the easiest way to get your cider from one container to the next. Um, something I forgot to mention, ingredients you'll need. You'll need um, a sanitizer. This is used to clean all your equipment. It's extremely important to keep all your equipment as clean as can be or um, you can and ruin an entire batch of cider. So um, definitely have to have sanitizer. 
Uh, I usually like using just like something to mix in my ingredients with. So I have this plastic mixer. Uh, the next thing you might want is a hydrometer. This allows you to predict the amount of alcohol that will be in your finished product. So if you want a 6% cider when you're done, this will help you to see how much sugar, in our, our case, honey, we need to add to get a 6% cider. So this is a pretty big must. You're gonna need a primary fermentation bucket. Um, this is what we're gonna be making our cider in to begin with. And you also need a lid and an airlock with this. The airlock keeps oxygen out of the fermenter while uh, the yeast are making alcohol. I generally like having an extra bucket on hand. Um, I'll mix up my sanitizer solution in this bucket and I'll use it with a rag to clean all my equipment off. This isn't a necessary piece, so you can get by without it. And finally, um, this is a five gallon glass carboy. After the cider goes through the primary fermenter, we'll be racking it with the racking wand into this um, to allow all the yeast to drop out and clarify your cider. All right, so I went ahead and I mixed up our sanitizer solution with the Star Sand sanitizer in two gallons of water. You can make more sanitizer if you want. I find uh, two gallons of water works out great for me. So kind of give this a stir. Um, next thing you do is you just start sanitizing, letting it soak in, your equipment soak in the sanitizer. So everything that touches your wine has to be sanitized. Make sure you do this part. I can't stress the importance. Now that we got all our cider equipment sanitized, the next step is to dump our ingredients into our five gallon bucket. Today we'll be making a five gallon batch. I just like making a little larger quantities than a gallon. Uh, it's more time efficient for me. So all we're going to do is we're going to open up our ciders and we're going to pour them in our sanitized bucket. On this guys, I really want to make sure you know, um, I like pouring the cider in from really high up. Like that. You see how bubbly it gets? That adds oxygen, which is a good nutrient for your yeast. So I recommend pouring it in like that. All right, the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be seeing how much uh, sugar is in our apple cider. After we've poured it in, we have to know how much potential alcohol is in this. So basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hydrometer, you're gonna plop it in your cider and give it a little spin. And when it levels out, it'll show you what percentage it is. So I've done some calculations and currently we have 5% um, estimated alcohol content in here. And to get it up to 6%, it turns out we're gonna have to add a pound and a half of honey from what I can tell. Um, and so then I know this is five pounds, so I calculated that I need 1.33 cups of honey to get this up 1%. So uh, your calculations might be different and we'll see what we get when we add 1.33 cups of honey. 